Welcome into the shop. It's great to have you all here. Now for this video, we're not actually going to be in the shop. Uh, we're doing a series called Have It Made. So if you're new to the channel, Have It Made is kind of a, a thing where I go and, and film and showcase other crafts. People kind of promote craft. And for this video, we're doing Frank Straza, who's an incredibly talented furniture maker. Actually, is, is kind of a mentor of mine. I took classes with Frank back in 2006. It was actually, it was actually a Windsor chair class uh, and have uh, learned a lot from Frank over the years. Uh, he's got a wide range of skills in the furniture making. He does traditional furniture. Uh, he builds amazing workbenches. He does marquetry. He does inlay. He does instrument making. He does letter carving. He pretty much can do it all. Um, super talented guy, and I hope you guys enjoy this um, kind of window into Frank's skill and his craft. Um, be sure to stay tuned at the end. There's some bonus footage of him cutting a houndstooth dovetail, which is a really interesting dovetail joint that goes on his workbench. And also, I'm going to put a link in the description to his Instagram account so you can go follow him and see his work uh, because it's it's worth it. He's super talented. I hope you enjoy the series and um, appreciate you guys tuning in. You know, woodworking is so much more than just furniture making. Um, you go, and I've I've been I've been uh, inspired by the work of the masters. You know, you go to museums and you look at furniture that was made 200 years ago, and there's carving, there's inlay, there's the joinery, there's so many different aspects, and I think I find an interest in all the aspects. I guess in essence, I'm uh, a jack of all trades and a master of none. <laughs> you know, I'm pretty fortunate to be able to get to work with my hands every day to be able to take rough lumber and, and create something. And I, I enjoy working with a freshly sharpened tool, um, slicing the wood, slicing the fibers, carving the wood, shaping the wood. Um, the details really are something that uh, I get excited about, um, whether it be inlay or some super fine carving or cutting a, a, a tight joint, the satisfaction that you get from cutting a, a joint that fits together. And uh, whenever I'm building furniture, I'm always thinking about how long is this going to last? I want this to last. I'm thinking about long term. Is this something that's going to outlive me and uh, last for at least 100 years and hopefully more? Whenever I'm letter carving, I think there's an element to the carving that you don't get when it's machine done with a CNC. Um, this aspect of imperfection that's part of, of the piece. And that imperfection, I think, is kind of speaks to the, the fact that it's that it's handmade. And I think people want that in today's day and age. So much of today, we're surrounded by things that are mass manufactured or things that are made to absolute precision. And so I think people, they feel drawn to this uh, element of something that's actually handmade that maybe has a little imperfection. And the imperfection comes from the fact that it was made actually from a human being that's actually working the tool through the wood as opposed to a computer or a robot or something like that. I think another thing about carving, and this is a very subtle thing, but sometimes it's the subtle things that really do make a difference. And um, when you're carving along with a chisel, you can create this infinite cut as the, the serifs terminate. 
so the serif is the point of the letter, the bottom part of the letter that just kind of comes to, to nothing. And again, with a chisel, you can create this beautiful line that, again, is not really possible with, uh, with a machine. So over the years, I've, I've tried to make myself a bench, and every time that I've, I've made a bench, I've actually ended up selling it. And uh, it's actually one of my benches. I inlaid my name into it next to the dovetails, and uh, a client in New York City bought it. So somewhere in, in uh, Manhattan on some high rise, my bench sits there with, with my name into it. I asked the client if he wanted to me to change it out. And he's like, no, leave your name in there. But having a high quality, good workbench, I think is central to any uh, woodworking shop and especially for hand tool uh, woodworking. I think a workbench has been used uh, as the central tool, if you will, for, for centuries. So it's really only been in recent uh, years, I think, with the mechanization of woodworking and the advent of machinery more in, in your woodworking shop that the bench has kind of been relegated to the sideline of, of the shop. But really having a good high quality bench is I think essential to, to hand tool woodworking really because that's where everything is done. You're using that bench, having good um, work holding is extremely important. Having a tail vise to be able to secure your work piece down Having a good solid bench, it's not going to move while you're uh, hand planing and uh, cutting joinery. Having a good front vise, uh, hold fast, all of that is super important to, uh, to hand tool woodworking. On this recent bench that I I made, I, I decided to inlay carpe diem, which I love that, uh, that Latin phrase. And uh, you know, one of the things about uh, woodworking is there's so many things to, to learn. And I feel like I'm constantly learning. I've been doing this for 25 years or so, but there's always something new to learn. And you're always learning something. The materials are teaching you the tools, and then there's new techniques. And if ever I think that I'm getting somewhere in woodworking, all I have to do is look at the work of the masters uh, 200 years ago and I realize that I'm just barely scratching the surface. So in essence, carpe diem for me is seize the moment, seize the day, and learn as much as I possibly can and build as high quality work as I possibly can. I've been pretty fortunate over the years to get to work on a lot of pretty interesting projects. Um, I think one of the most interesting projects that I got to work on, and it was a collaboration, I worked with uh, a few other craftsmen. We worked together to build two cabinets for the permanent collection of the White House, and uh, they were made by an outgoing president, uh, now sit in the cabinet room. Uh, against a curved wall and they're made out of mesquite so native texas mesquite with uh, actually some wood that was um, from the white house north lawn we've used some elements of oak uh, from one of the branches from a tree that uh, it was in the white house north lawn that we cut up and used that and inlaid that into the door panels of these two cabinets and uh, so that was a pretty memorable project i would say
one of my, my passions is, is violin making, and you know, there's violins that are made with machines. You know, they're all routed out, CNC's and, and things of that nature. Furniture the same way, but there's different ways to look at that, but I think when you, when you produce something solely with a machine, um, it loses, obviously it loses the handmade aspect, but it also loses the soul that you would actually, um, that you feel from the, from the craftsman that put it into it. You know, one thing is, is that I will definitely say that I feel like I've been blessed to being introduced to the craft when I was young, um, also having wonderful and encouraging teachers when I was young, because, you know, I think any young person that's interested in a craft should do it when they're young, because there's skills that are developed at that age, and those skills I'm uh, using even now so much further down the road and uh, I don't think if I was given those opportunities when I was young I don't know that I would be able to be able to create uh, this type of, of work and make a living at it. So it's something that I get to do every day I enjoy doing. There's a satisfaction in being able to create even something as simple as a perfect chamfer around the top edge of, uh, of this uh, tool and then to be able to deliver this to the client and see their happy faces and uh, also get to uh, see what they can create with something like this. And I, and I, I, I look at something like this as functional Functional art, maybe, or functional. Yeah, it is a, it's, a, it's a work table, but it's also, uh, it's supposed to be a beautiful, a beautiful piece as well, so. Look at the way this chamfers right in here. I just love that. So I like doing the houndstooth dovetails. Really, it's a little bit overkill, honestly, but it, it kind of shows the complexity. It's a complex joint, and it shows the craftsmanship. And I like doing the needle point because it's obviously something that uh, really would be difficult to cut with a machine, um, and so it shows that it was handmade. The um, One of the secrets for cutting any dovetail joint but is, is proper sawing technique and uh, how to saw properly. So I, I start by laying it out, le using a dividers and, and laying out the, the joint, and then I cut the, um, the tails with a, uh, with an old Diston tenon saw and um, making sure that you don't cut past the line, hopefully, and um, making sure that you follow the angle, but if the angle's a little bit off, it really doesn't matter a little bit off because you're going to transfer that onto the pins. But you want to make sure that the, uh, the, the cut is square across the, the top edge. After the tails are cut, I cope out the waist. I chisel down to the line. I transfer the tails to the pin board, which is in this case walnut. So I've got the maple, hard maple going onto walnut. Um, I like the contrast between the light and the dark. Um, and transfer that carefully with a knife, very carefully with a knife. And then I saw on the waist side of the line and chisel out the, uh, the waist 